Now that connections to the database have been made simple, the time has come to start writing data to it and reading data from it. To show you how this is done, I have a program that creates a table in the database and writes data to it. It's called Make Animal Table. You can see what the program does by looking at the main method. It calls methods to create the table, adds four records to the table, and then closes it. It's very simple. This is the method that creates the table. The first thing that happens is the database is opened and a statement object is created. This can be done in lots of different ways. The database could be opened in a separate location, and statement objects can be created for each SQL command. You can even, if you wish, open and close the database for each SQL command. It just depends on the purpose and design of your application. Now this application is for demonstration, so I kept it simple by opening the database and creating a statement object and using them for the entire program. This is the method call that creates the table. The name of the method is execute update, and it's one of the three methods that you can call to execute an SQL command. I'll be showing you all of them and how they work in an upcoming movie. The one you use depends on what you are trying to do and what you want or expect to get back. In this example, we want the status back, which is, for create, a zero to indicate success. The table being constructed contains the name of an animal up to 16 characters long and the count of the number of legs for that animal. This particular table is sort of the hello world for databases. The add method is used to insert new data into the table. It could create and close a new statement object each time, but in this example the same statement object is used for every SQL command. Here you see the same method is used again that was used to create the database before. The execute update method returns different types of status information depending on the SQL command being used. In this case the SQL command is insert, so the correct status to get back is 1 which is the number of rows that were affected by the command. In other words, the expected status coming back from this method call is the number of rows in the database that were affected by any command. In this case, in the case of creating the table, zero rows were affected, so that was a good status return. For this call to execute update, the correct status is 1. Now, the last method in this class is called close. It closes the statement and then closes the connection. Now, there is an odd little bug in doing it this way. Say the statement fails to close. The exception would be thrown immediately and the connection would not be closed. Like I said, it's an odd little bug, but if something is wrong with the statement, something is probably wrong with the connection too. But in the next movie, I'll show you one fix for this problem. Now, here's what it looks like when you run the program. You can see where the status values came back, showing first the zero of a successful table build, and then a series of ones showing that data has been successfully stored in the database. The table is out there. I can prove it by running this same program again. This time there's nothing but error messages. The table couldn't be created because it already exists. None of the data could be added to it because it's already out there. In the next lesson I'll show you the program I wrote to read the data and remove the table.